Hello everyone, in this video I discuss the difference between truth tables and truth trees and talk a little bit about how to set up a truth tree. So the first place to start is to talk about how truth trees differ for, from truth tables. So one thing to note is what a truth table is. Now a truth table provides a mechanical means for determining whether or not a proposition, set of propositions, or, or argument has a particular logical property. So for example, we can use a truth table to determine whether or not a proposition is a contingency, tautology, or contradiction, or we could check to see if a set of propositions or utterances is consistent, or we could look to see if an argument is valid or invalid. Now, there are two shortcomings of truth tables. The first is that truth tables tend to be cumbersome when we're looking at arguments or sets of propositions or formulas that have more than two propositional letters. The reason is is because truth tables become increasingly complex the number of propositional letters that are found in them. So for example, a truth table with eight distinct propositional letters, A, B, C, D, and so forth, would require 256 rows. Now this would be a humongous truth table. Secondly, truth tables only work for logical languages that are truth functional. And so we won't be able to use truth tables to analyze logical languages that aren't truth functional. With this said, the advantage of truth trees is that one, their complexity is not a function of the number of propositional letters in the formula being analyzed. If we have eight distinct propositional letters in a set of formulas, it won't be the case that we have this hugely complex truth tree. In addition, and I'll talk about this in another video, that the truth tree method is capable of being adapted to more expressive logical languages that aren't truth functional. The next thing I want to discuss is how to set up a truth tree. So typically, truth trees begin with an initial setup involving three columns. The first column is a simple column for numbering. It's a column that we'll use to number each one of the formulas or propositions in the tree so we can refer back to it easily. The second column is for writing the propositions or stacking the propositions. These are where all the formulas are going to go in the truth tree. The third column, and this column is optional and won't necessarily be presented here, is for justifying each of the formulas or propositions. This column will indicate why a particular formula is on the line that it is. So let's take a quick illustration. Suppose we had the following two formulas or propositions, P wedge R and then also M wedge not P. So here are the three columns. The first column is simply numbering propositions that will be found in column two, and column two consists of the formulas that we are putting into the truth tree. The third column is the justification of the formulas. It explains why those formulas are there, and in this case, these are the formulas that we want to analyze, and so we'll simply write P for a proposition. So two quick notes about the presentation of truth trees here. In most introductory logic textbooks, there's special attention paid to the third column, which is the column for justification. In the presentation of the videos here, I won't pay too close attention to this third column, but I will state why each one of the formulas is on the line that it is. The second note is that although I've presented here how to set up the truth tree, it's important to note that the truth tree setup will vary depending upon what you are trying to analyze. So for example, if you wanted to analyze a set of propositions to see if they were valid or invalid or one entailed another, then you would have a specific setup. The same thing is true for consistency and inconsistency. If you wanted to test a set of formulas to see if they're consistent or inconsistent, there's a specific setup as well as equivalence and contingency tautology and contradiction.